Brain! Brain! Yes, Pinky? What are we doing tonight? The same thing we do every night. Try to take over the world. Come, Pinky. Alright, Brian. On my way. Hurry up. I'm coming, I'm coming. Aloha, and welcome to this week's video. Uh, so if you didn't see last week's video, um, it was making the material that you're seeing here. It's a mix of wood and epoxy. And then... Uh, this week I'm going to be finishing this piece here, it's a Leo Mano. Uh, what you saw me do there is, um, I, I get quite a few comments, uh, people say, hey, you should wear a mask, you should wear some type of, of breather. Um, I have a pretty good airflow in my shop, I also have a, uh, large air filter and dust collection, but as I started working on this piece, um, the epoxy was just leaving enormous amounts of dust and uh, I definitely didn't want to risk breathing in the epoxy dust. Um, so I went ahead and grabbed my respirator and threw that on, had everything else running, uh, and that way I'd keep myself a little bit <laughs> safer. <laughs> uh, so for this piece, I'm making a fairly basic Leo Mano. Uh, Leo Mano roughly translates to a shark's lay. Um, and so it's kind of like a lay of shark's teeth is, is what it's referring to. Um, you can see here just all of the dust that's being kicked up from this piece, um, which is actually a lot. I, I don't normally have this much um, dust. Most of this, I think, is epoxy. I don't usually have this much dust from just one piece. Um, and so working with the epoxy, it definitely creates you know, quite a bit more dust than uh, expected. <laughs> uh, this port here is kind of like a vacuum port. Um, it's not actually a vacuum, um, but it does lead to my air dust collection unit. And so um, I leave that running. It does help with grab, grabbing some pieces, but it's primarily just so I can quickly clean up the area and you know get back to work without spending too much time on, on cleaning the heavy particles off my desk. The light particles tend to get pulled into my air filter, which is directly to the right. Your right, not my right, your right. <laughs> uh, and so I have a, a large air filter that's sitting there. It cycles the air in the shop about, I think it's seven to eight times per hour. Um, I can't remember. It's been a long time since I, I, I set that thing up. Um, so what I'm doing here is I've, I've finished the rough shaping with my angle grinder, and now I'm sanding it. Uh, I'm going to be sanding it down to probably 220 before I put in the teeth. Um, one thing I noticed almost immediately was it was really difficult to sand. <laughs> Um, the epoxy sands really well, and so does wood, but the epoxy and the wood are different densities, and on top of that, the wood itself, I've got, oh man, a combination of five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different pieces of koa that are in this piece, and each one of them is a slightly different hardness, and so it's just trying to get an even sand across all of the, that variation ended up being extremely difficult. Um, I only used the chisel here for this one section. This is just to clean up this edge. Um, I, I won't be using the chisel, chisel for uh, both sections. Um, one thing that you will notice though is one side is really crisp. You can see all the clean edges. Um, the other side, and you can see it from here, uh, but that other side, uh, the epoxy was deeper. Um, I think that was the top side, so I, I ended up using a lot of epoxy. I, I didn't quite center my piece as I was shaping it, and so I, I kind of went leaned on accident towards the epoxy side. Um, and so I've got epoxy there that I can't remove. But it's okay, I ended up liking it better, actually. <laughs> uh, so to set the teeth, I cut in the groove with a Dremel and a tungsten carbide bit. Um, and then I'm putting in some epoxy here mixed with wood shavings. Um, I don't fill the gap. Uh, I put just enough so that the teeth will, will stick into place. And I do that so that when I drill the teeth out, um, they're a lot easier to, to drill out. Um, I didn't record me putting in both halves, mainly because I forgot to hit record. <laughs> but it's exactly the same as this half, just on the other side. <laughs> so if you were looking for, for that second half, I apologize. 
So here I'm just kind of deciding on how I want to lash this. Um, you need to decide how you want to lash it before you start drilling holes because the hole placement affects your lashing. Um, I'm going to be doing just a standard lashing on this one. And so it's just going to be one hole per tooth. And then there'll be a hole in between each one of the shark teeth. Now you'll notice that I'm putting in the uh, form for these holes before I drill the shark teeth. And that's because it doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> the spacing on these is dependent on where, you know, the size of the shark tooth, so on the outer edges of the shark tooth, and the distance from the edge of the wood um, inward. And so I use a guide to make sure that my distance from the edge is the same all the way around, and then I'm just placing the holes in between each tooth. Um, if I were going to be doing a double lash or um, a different type of pattern, <clears throat> I'd have more holes in my core. But <clears throat> for this piece, I'm not going to be doing that. Sorry about that. Um, the holes that I'm drilling in the shark teeth are using a, a really fine uh, tungsten carbide bit. Um, I just kind of hold the teeth and, and drill the hole in, as you can see here. The tungsten carbide bit works really well. <clears throat> One thing I have to be careful with, though, is sometimes it starts to vibrate. Um, and I've broken a, a tooth that way where it's vibrating and then it violently shakes and it breaks the tooth. So I do have to be careful with that. So now that I have uh, the t holes drilled, tapped into the teeth and drilled into the core, I'm going to go ahead and finish sanding. Uh, I'm going to be sanding this piece to 320. Um, I thought about taking it to a higher grit, but um, I kind of was just looking at the 320 as I was going through it. Um, it looked good. Um, I have a variety of different grains of koa wood, and uh, going into those fine grains only really look amazing when you have really heavy uh, curl, and only some of these pieces have heavy curl. Some of the pieces are, are a lighter curl. Um, some just have a heavy figure, and so I, I decided to leave it at 320 as my the, the highest grit that I'd be taking it to. Um, one thing that I was excited for this entire time, I mean, from before I even decided on my first pattern, <laughs> was oiling the piece. I pretty much from when I first started the mold, that's what I was thinking of. I was like, oh, this is going to look so cool. <laughs> so here it is. Oh, man. And here's, I, I was nervous, but I am so pleased with how this worked out. So that's not black. And it's hard to tell from the video. Um, it's actually, well, it's kind of not too bad. You can kind of tell, but it's more of a blue. So the pigment that I used in the epoxy was a midnight blue pigment, but I mixed a ton of it. I specifically made it really, really dark. Um, I, I didn't want it uh, transparent, or I wanted its transparency to be, you know, at a minimum. Um, and so you get a really deep contrast between the epoxy and the wood, and man, it just looks awesome. I just absolutely love the way this piece looks. <laughs> so here on the back side here, this is what I was talking about, how I had epoxy that was a little bit deeper. Um, I, I couldn't sand it out, not because I physically couldn't, but because the piece was already too thin. So if I, if I sanded that out, that's my center, that's my ridge. So if I bring my ridge down, I have to bring my edges down. And I just didn't have enough material to bring it down any further. Um, but I ended up kind of liking it. It gave it more character. So it, the, the front side and the back side, I don't know which one you would call which, but I just really liked the character. And then I really liked, you can kind of see the thin layer of epoxy over the coal wood there. Um, it has that transparent look to it where you can see the, the waves in the koa through the epoxy. I thought that looked so cool. <laughs> so that was just a luck. <laughs> Uh, it just ended up working out really well. But man, I, the the contrast in colors with the koa and the epoxy was just amazing. Um, I love this piece. It's, this is super cool. <laughs> uh, I am going to be making some more things with uh, the material I have left over. Um, I'm going to be making two marlin-tipped daggers. Pahoa is what they're called. And then I'm going to be making, actually after that, I have a large section left, and I don't know what to make out of it. 
So leave in the comments below if uh, what you think I should use some of my remaining material left to make. Um, I, I might just pick the uh, best suggestion and uh, make that piece. <laughs> Uh, so what I'm doing here, and I, I don't really show this very often, so I thought I'd show it this time, is I'm super gluing the end of the lashing. What that does is it hardens it up, and it kind of makes it like a needle. Um, so it makes it a lot easier to thread. Um, yes, you could use a needle. Um, I just don't have any needles that are small enough to fit through the holes in the koa, and large enough for the, the lashing. Um, and so what I do is I super glue that end, it hardens it up and makes it easier to thread as I, 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 I move about the piece. So I'm just doing a single ply lash on this one. Um, so it, does, it won't take as long as it normally does. Uh, lashing usually takes a while. Um, it's one of my least favorite steps just because it's uh, mundane. You know, it's the same process over and over. Um, the funny thing is though is it's, it's one of the last steps and so it really ties everything together. Everything comes into place. And so it's one of my least favorite steps, but at the same time, once it's lashed is when it really looks awesome. <laughs> so it's a necessary evil. And then obviously if you're in battle, proper lashing is going to, you know, make sure your teeth stay in place and that your weapon is fully functional. So here is the final piece out in the natural light. Um, the curl on the different pieces, the, the figure and the, the grain the contrast um, there's even some light koa some edge wood mixed in uh, the entire piece turned out absolutely gorgeous um, i loved it even this section here where it had kind of that excess epoxy um, it gave it a unique character and so i just every every side every piece of it um, i was absolutely in love with it well, this piece was a ton of fun uh go ahead and uh Leave me in the comments below if you enjoyed it as well. Um, like and subscribe. Um, it really helps out a lot. I appreciate everyone's support. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you next time. Aloha.